I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Uh, before we get into the video, just a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters James Welch, Basic Terra Cole, Tamara Alex Exan, Retro Galaxy, Clone 13, Foodzel CC, Jet Simon, Alex Fedora, Bam Van, Olivia, Bernia, and Arta Wadwajaz. Thank you guys so much for supporting my game dev journey, and I hope you're enjoying the Patreon benefits. So, I got an invite to participate in a giant collab project. Andrew David has a crazy idea. A crazy idea to round up 50 YouTube game devs and remake Mario Party. We each chose a game from a list of 50 mini games that were available, and it was our job to recreate it in our own style. You can derive from the mini game you choose, but the inspiration has to be evident enough. So basically, as long as you can roughly associate your game to the original mini game, all is well. Winner! Your game should ideally be local multiplayer. AI is optional. Any engine is allowed, any control scheme is allowed, as long as it's explained on the page in-game. There are no rules on art, but don't use licensed assets or characters. We're recreating the gameplay, not the Nintendo graphics. Don't use Nintendo art or characters, or risk ending up in Nintendo jail. Mamma mia! Everyone participating should have a YouTube channel, and intend to produce a video for their game ideally. Okay, let's begin. Unfortunately, I was late to accept the invitation. And by the time I got to the game select spreadsheet, the only game left was Coin Block Bash. This presented a problem right off the bat. It was a 3D game. Construct 3 is a 2D engine, unless you're Foozle CC, who can apparently make anything work with this engine. Luckily, I could lean heavily on rule number one. You can derive from the mini game you choose, but the inspiration has to be evident enough. Great, Coin Block Bash is now a 2D local multiplayer game. So to me, local multiplayer means two people playing from the same keyboard, which sounded simple enough. I just needed to program in two sets of controls that nest within groups and simply set those groups either active or deactive based on whether the player chooses one or two player mode. The tricky bit here was, if the player chooses one player, that second playable character now needs to become an AI. I solved this issue by creating multiple groups of controls that would toggle on or off based on the number of players. I created a main set of controls for player 1, as this would always be active, and then AI controls for players 3 and 4. I then created a user control group for player 2, if player 2 mode was selected, and also an AI control group for player 2 if player 1 mode was selected. As Coin Block Bash was a 1 vs 3 minigame, I defaulted player 1 to always be on their own. If 2 player mode was selected, player 2 would simply join the team of 2 AI characters. I programmed the AI using the platform behaviour in Construct 3. It wasn't too challenging. Let me show you how I did it. Firstly, because player 1 had a giant mallet, I needed to give all the other players a boolean variable to state whether they'd been stunned by the mallet or not. I also created a string variable on each of the AI characters to set their state, either right, left or jump. I assigned the platform simulate control action based on this state, and set the corresponding animation to play. At the start of the layout, I set the AI state to either left, right or jump to get them started in a direction, and there are triggers that are invisible dotted around the level that reset this variable on contact. I also placed triggers under the coin block which tell the AI character to jump. This was all well and good, but the problem I was facing was that when the AI bashed a coin from the block, they would simply ignore it and keep running around. I fixed this with the line of sight behaviour. If the AI character has line of sight to a coin, it will ignore all its movement logic and chase down that coin like a possessed golem. When they collect it, or the coin is collected by another player, they go back to the movement logic and continue bashing coin blocks. Player 1 has a giant mallet, and if he hits any of the other players, they fly off in the opposite direction, become stunned for a moment and drop coins. 
Here's how that works. Firstly, I set the movement mechanic to work only if the boolean stunned is false. So if player 1 is swinging the mallet and it collides with another player, that player's boolean gets set to stunned which in turn disables the movement group. I then call a function which spawns in some stars, plays a nice sound effect and sets them back to being unstunned. In order to create knockback, I run a check to see where the player is in comparison to the other character. If the player is to the left, we knock the character back to the right and vice versa. Lastly, I run a check to see if the opposing team have more than two coins. If they do, I ask the system to create the coin object and subtract from the team's coin tally. The function that controls coin blocks has a perimeter which detects which coin block the player AI is hitting. I do this by simply passing the unique ID of the object when calling the function. Each coin block has a variable that controls the number of hits it can take before breaking. When it gets hit, I simply subtract from this number until it reaches zero, then destroy the block. You can see that I've made the interaction with the blocks look a little juicier by changing the block's size and position slightly when hit. I also linked the frames of animation to the hit counter on each block to show signs of deterioration as the block breaks. When you hit the block, there is a chance the block will spit out a coin, as not all blocks will. I created a local variable and a random number generator to control this. When you hit a block, I ask the system to pick a number between 0 and 3. If it lands on the right number, the coin is spawned in. I added the physics behavior to the coins and added a pulse in a random upward direction at the point where the coin is created. So it shoots up and falls to the floor, giving the impression it jumped out of the block. The scoring is simple. I created two score variables. One for the player and one for the opposing team. If the player picks up a coin, one is added to the player's score. If any of the other players pick up a coin, one is added to the team score. I don't display the score during the game, like in the original, as it's fun to find out who won at the end. When the game is finished, I added a command to restart the game and that's pretty much it. You'll notice that on the how to play screen I've added a video. This is because the Mario Party how to play screen has game footage of how to play before the game starts. I created this by making some footage using OBS and DaVinci Resolve. I exported the clip as an mp4 file and imported it into the Construct 3's video folder. In the media category there is a video option which I added to the game which allows you to drag a video player into your game. I then told it which clip to play in the properties and then with a few simple events when you play the game the video loads and plays. I've added this game pack to the Construct.net asset store and itch.io with fully commented event sheets, source file, all the music, art and animations. If you want to buy it and pick it apart, remake it in your own style or simply use the assets in future projects, you can find it there. If you're a Patreon, you'll get this as a free download on my Patreon page. Links are in the description to everything I've mentioned, so check it out if you're interested. And that just about wraps things up for this devlog. Thanks for watching, if you made it this far, you truly are the 1%. Until the next video, take care and have a great week.